obviously the commission has put a lot of public money into this project and others and expects to um, see that what has been achieved uh, has the widest possible benefits. So here I'll be talking about that. Um, I should make clear that I'm not talking about dissemination though. Um, so take it as given that this project has had umpteen papers published, there's been loads of presentations at conferences, we've had a, a workshop like this every year, um, we've even had a video made and shown on the news. So there's been a lot of outreach to the public um, and to the wider scientific community, but this is about um, extracting benefit from the project. So I'll briefly say what we actually mean by exploitation, um, then I'll talk a bit about um, some of the shorter term um, exploitation, which is more in yeah, making mo more use of the capabilities developed, more um, kind of use of the tools and techniques that have come out through this project. And then um, I'll touch a bit on the longer term direct um, exploitation, so that being the commercial exploitation of the specific tool that you've seen today. So um, exploitation, essentially what we mean here is extracting the benefit from the project. So this could be anything from um, kind of using the knowledge that's been generated to do more scientific research. It could be um, taking the, the knowledge that's been generated and using that in training courses for radiologists or in teaching material for students who are going to go on to develop the next generation of technology. Um, but it also includes the kinds of benefits that are extracted by um, taking the tool, um, taking the, the actual um, software that's been developed and turning that into a, a service or a product for actual commercial use. These things obviously happen on very different time scales. Um, so in the short term, the story is mostly about this um, indirect exploitation. And it, it includes everything from adapting the tool, the Vigor tool, to use for different medical applications. It could be an extension of the, the kind of work we've done. Um, or it could be completely new um, uh, medical applications. It could just be about taking the data sets that have been generated and using them in different projects. Um, likewise, I mentioned the teaching and training. Um, it could be using some of the underlying techniques, the segmentation techniques, the visualization techniques, and applying them in completely different areas. Um, and another thing that has happened as a result of this project is various partners of um, got to know each other better, got to know their capabilities better, and have begun exploring collaborations that have absolutely nothing to do with the Vigor project, but just from the Vigor project having brought them together. And the, the overall message here is that we're already beginning to see quite a number of successes in terms of this, um, this kind of shorter term indirect exploitation. So the, I've put up a few examples here. Um, Kind of, I guess the one that follows nicely on from the robots presentation um, is that AMC are um, involved in a, um, using the tool to assess the effectiveness of um, medication. So taking some of the patients that have been through the Vigor study and then um, after treatment rescanning um, and, and using this as a way of, um, of kind of uh, aiding the drug trials. Um, UCLH have a similar situation where they're involved in a, um, a small uh, study with Imperial College London providing the MRI side of it and they can use this as an opportunity to take the Vigor tool and apply, the, apply it to the data to, to assess, quantify this effectiveness of treatment. Um, another one at UCL is um, actually just using the Vigor data sets um, using completely different techniques but using the data sets to extract 3D representation of the colon um, for surgical planning. A um, couple more, TU Delft working in the area of vascularization through this project have um, got work that's extending this using new contrast agents which will enter into the cells. Um, and ETH Zurich are, um, kind of um, organizing a collaboration with the bioinformatics group at NICTA in Australia and taking um, some of the MRI segmentation um, techniques over from Vigor to the um, area of prostate cancer. Then there's a whole list of further projects that are under consideration, so ones that the various partners are exploring with each other or with others, um, which will apply either the Vigor data sets or the Vigor tools. 
Um, so everything from bowel motility, uh, trying to um, develop correlation between the disease index and um, endoscopic score and uh, with this bowel motility data, uh, use of um, the VIGA tool for other diseases, so MRCP, proctitis, and potentially for um, using the tool for visualization of the colon. Um, the, there were a number of, uh, of the partners were interested in the idea of using um, or extending the use of the tool to provide automatic prompts um, for, the, uh, for the radiologist, um, but using this as a secondary read so that uh, when the radiologist has done their um, first pass through, um, that they're able to then be prompted in case there are things that they may miss. Um, and there's uh, also some talk of there being potential in using this tool for downstaging of um, rectal cancer through the, the, the ability to quantify the enhancement. Um, a few more here. So there's some further work that can be done on registering the T2-weighted images, uh, which uh, presumably will give some more information on Crohn's. Um, TU Delft have a number of ideas and a number of projects that are beginning to, um, to get uh, conceived in the area of vascularization, so extending the work to liver imaging, but also potentially into the neuroimaging area. Uh, which um, there's, uh, there's some talk of uh, association of vascularization with Alzheimer's disease. So this would be taking um, some of the work that's been started in vigor and applied to a completely different medical area. Um, I mentioned teaching and training. We're already seeing a few um, activities come through. So AMC have worked with uh, Utrecht Medical School um, in developing an iPad application for training of radiologists and within this there's already the incorporation of a large number of um, MRI images from the VIGOR toolset. Um, the, there is ideas to actually extend to using the VIGOR tool itself um, as a training aid, um, although there's obviously consideration as to um, where you should use this, whether this is um, this should um, not replace the traditional training because what you don't want is for your radiologists to defer to software before actually uh, going through the process of learning how to spot the, um, the, the symptoms themselves. But um, there's a, a view that actually this kind of training would be very useful for the type of radiologist who doesn't see very many cases, um, which is probably the average radiologist that Alistair was talking about at the beginning of the day. Um, some, uh, some of the work from the segmentation, the registration, the machine learning, and the visualization techniques has already found its way into other people's PhD and master's projects. So uh, the same techniques now are being applied in other projects. And uh, when it comes to lecture materials, there are already master's courses that have, are being delivered using case studies from the Vigor um, project. So a lot of actual no kind of knowledge transfer and learning happening as a result of Vigor. In the longer term, we're talking about the direct exploitation, and the topic's come up a few times today, um, and uh, Mike's uh, presentation just now obviously highlighted a number of areas where help could be um, given, and, and we kind of recognize that this is a much longer process, uh, a number of further hurdles to jump through. But uh, where we believe we are at the moment is we, we currently have a prototype tool um, that's given academic proof that it can provide a, a better um, kind of correlation than the existing Crohn's indices. Um, we believe we have the, the kind of foundation for exploitation now, uh, but it does need further optimization. This needs to be turned from a, a kind of academic prototype tool into a kind of almost a pre-commercial prototype and then uh, to be fully exploited. Uh, key to this, though, is acceptance by the medical community. Um, we're presenting to a, a kind of warmed up academic audience at the moment, uh, people who are experts in the field has been mentioned many times today. What we need to do though is get wider knowledge of this, wider acceptance and uh, part of that will be a publication of a kind of overall vigor paper in a major medical journal which will ha help to build the credibility of the approach. We also, um, as Harry mentioned earlier, need to work on what the value proposition for this is is it um, the kind of so-called average radiologist who doesn't see a huge number of um, cases each year, who's more of a generalist? Is, 
is the value proposition more towards clinical trials? We, we need to explore where we can add most value with this um, and then taking it forward to commercialization. Um, but we've done a number of um, kind of tasks to set the foundations for being able to commercialize it. And this included um, looking at what the requirements are for us to get into the clinical trials area, um, what accreditation and certification we need. Um, kind of we've uh, sorted out the IP arrangements between the partners, um, discussed how we um, actually take this forward in terms of revenue sharing, um, and also in terms of product support and further development. So that there is a lot of activity that's been going on towards the end of this project to make sure that um, if we can get the clinical uh, community interested in this, uh, with a bit ex of extra work in terms of making this more, um, I guess, commercially stable, um, we have the foundation of an exploitable product. Um, so in con conclusion, I think the, the basic messages are exploitation happens in many different areas and um, in the short term we've got on with it and are getting some good results. Um, we also uh, know that in the longer term um, we have the potential to exploit this. Uh, we have plenty of further opportunities for more of that indirect um, exploitation through many further academic projects and it's understandable that those come first given that a large part of the, the project consortium is academic and we'll be looking for the next project to apply this to. Um, so we believe we're in reasonably good shape to do some commercial exploitation as long as we can get the uh, medical community on side. Thank you.